the whole series was really a setup for this particular message. This is something that has been on my heart for years and years and years. This is something that God has developed in my life, that God has challenged me in. And I kind of just want to share the journey that God has brought me on and challenge you to take a step into that same journey. Amen? I remember about, I'm going to date myself, but everybody knows how old I am anyway. But I think it was like seven years ago. I was 18 and I was getting ready to head off to school, the best college in the universe, University of Maryland College Park. Come on now. <laughs> Fear the turtle. <laughs> Everybody else say, yeah, whatever. But it was a normal Sunday. It was probably about a month before I was heading off to school. I was going off to freedom, and I was sitting in church, and it was just a normal Sunday. The service was coming to a close. The message was over, and a couple of people were coming up, and, and they were giving their testimony. And I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't really listening. I know you're supposed to go to church and listen and, and encourage each other. I was kind of, my mind was already in a parking lot. I was like, okay, church is over. And then kind of just out of the corner of my ear, I heard this guy say, that this week my car went up in smoke, my car was completely destroyed, and I need God to provide another car so that I can take myself and my mother to work, and if we don't, we're not gonna be able to provide for ourselves. And, and I did what all of you are doing right now, and, and I thought what every other Christian would think, oh, God, bless him. God, pr provide a car for that dear brother. He, uh, he, he needs you to step in his life. And I was, I was just thinking, I was like, oh, man, that's so unfortunate. I really hope that God, God opens that door for him. And as I was thinking that, I was just standing there, and I, I just heard God say, give him your car. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, when I say I heard God tell me, give him my car, I'm not saying that this audible voice was like, Stephen, give him your car keys. But I just had this sense in my spirit that God was saying, give him your car. Now, here's the thing. You know I'm a man of God. I love God. I always do what God tells me to do. So the second I heard that, something began to rise up inside of me. The devil is a liar. <laughs> I rebuke you, Satan. That is not God. <laughs> Come on now, that unclean spirit. I don't know what that is. But that is not the voice of God. You have to understand, I had... This, this interesting love-hate relationship with my car. It was my first car. How many people remember your first car? There's just, there's just something special. <laughs> Some of you want to forget your first car. My first car was the ugliest sea green Toyota Camry that you have ever seen in your life. And I love that car. I'm talking about I love that car <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I literally had worked for two years. I worked at a daycare. I don't know if you know anything about me, but me and kids, mm. <laughs> I worked at a daycare for two years, saved up all my money, bought the car myself. And two months after I got the car, I crashed it. And you know, my, my dad is really resourceful and he realized there was nothing wrong with the engine. So he, he zip tied my hood shut and he, he stuffed the airbag back in the steering wheel and I drove you know, a car with his airbag sticking in my face for a year. And I had just gotten it repaired right before that Sunday. Like it had, I mean, it was repainted. All the rust was gone. I mean, I was ready to go to school styling and profiling in my green bomber. And all of a sudden, I just sense in my spirit, God's saying, give him your car. And, you know, after church, everybody's talking and shaking hands, and it's so good to see you. I was quiet. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. I was just, I was literally just saying, God, are you sure? Because, you see, I've been raised in tithing. I was tithing. I was stewarding my money. I was saving. I mean, I bought the car myself. I, I was doing what I felt God wanted me to do with my finances, but I had never been challenged to give on this level before. And I'm walking around just saying, God, are you sure? God, are you sure? And God says, I'm not changing my mind. <laughs> give him your car. And I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. All of a sudden, as soon as I said, you know what I'm going to do with God, this joy overwhelmed my heart. And all of a sudden, I thought, hold a second. God is going to use me to bless somebody else's life. And I went over to the guy, he was talking to some people, talking about his car had gone up in smoke, and I, I kind of just blurted out, I'm going to give you my car. 
And he looked at me with that, you know, that say what look. He's like, huh? <laughs> He's like, oh, you're going to let me loan your car? I said, no, no, no. I'm going to give you my car. And he just kind of looked at me with this blank stare. And it was that moment that this verse came to life for me, that it is better to give than to receive. God says that the greatest blessing that we can ever experience is to be able to bless others instead of being blessed ourselves. I don't know about you, for me, that is a difficult concept to grasp hold of. I don't know if you've ever been in need, if you've ever been facing a bill that was coming up or something that you didn't know how you were going to be able to provide for it or how you were going to be able to cover it, and then all of a sudden God just comes in miraculously and takes care of that need. Anybody had that experience before? I'm telling you, you're shouting, you're screaming. It is unbelievable. I remember in college, I, I, I worked while I was in school, and I, I needed my cell phone uh, to work. And I was coming downstairs one day, and I had my cell phone on top of my books, and I was talking on this speakerphone. And before you know it, my cell phone goes flying off my books, hits the first wall, down another staircase, and down another staircase. Three flights later, my cell phone was in like four different pieces. And I'm just like, no, I didn't have any money for a new phone. I just got the phone off of eBay, don't tell anybody. And I was just like, no. I remember I went into the provider, I had no service, I had nothing, and I just said, can you do anything? And you know, you know that gut feeling that just sinks in when you know I have to change this transmission, I gotta put a new tire on, and I just don't have the money for it, and you're just, you maybe were just getting ahead, and you're just like, man, here we go again. And I remember that provider came out and he says, here's a brand new phone, don't worry about it. And I walked out that door, and I'm telling you, I sat in my car and I cried. Not because of the cell phone, But there's just something about knowing that God sees the little things in your life. You know what I mean? There's just something about realizing that God is concerned about everything that goes in my life. It was a stupid cell phone, whatever. But the fact that God cares is what just blew my mind. But God says being able to give is more blessed than that feeling when he steps in on the little things. I don't know if you've ever had more than enough. You, you were in a position where you can buy that Louis Vuitton or you can get that car that you've always wanted. I'm telling you, I've had things sometimes where I'm just blown away by how God has blessed me. But yet God is saying, in spite of all those things, the greatest blessing you can ever experience is being able to be a blessing to other people. And here's why. When we give unto others, we are most like Christ at that moment. If you were to sum the entire Bible up in one phrase, it would be this, that God so loved that he gave. If you want to know what the whole Bible is about, what the whole deal is, it's this, God so loved that he gave. When we give unto others, we are becoming the most like Christ and experience the greatest joy and the greatest reward that we can ever imagine. That's the first reason. The second reason is this. When we give, we get to partner with God in what he is doing in somebody else's life. Do you know when God gives unto you, he's blessing you, and and it's awesome, but there's no partnership there. You're receiving, and he's giving. But when you're giving into somebody else's life, you're able to partner with the almighty God to do something that will have an eternal result. I don't know about you, but just picture being able to play basketball one-on-one with Michael Jordan. Or be, just, just picture being able to sing a, a duet with your favorite artist. I don't know who it is. I wouldn't sing at all. I'd just sit there and let them sing, and I wouldn't mess it up at all. But, you know, when, when you partner with someone that is just, you know, magnified in your eyes, it's amazing. And we don't realize that when we give, we're partnering with the creator of the universe to be a blessing in somebody else's life. There is no greater feeling. And the most important one is this. When we give, we are blessing God. You know, the Bible says, and I want to throw this verse at you. Let me find it real quick. In Matthew chapter 25, God was saying, hey, thank you so much because when I was in need, you covered me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And the disciples looked at Jesus and they said, hold on. First of all, you were never hungry because you turned water into wine, you turned loaves into fish, and you were never in prison. What in the world are you talking about? 
And Jesus said this, he says, as much as you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. In other words, Christ is saying that when you give, you're blessing somebody, but you're not really giving to them, you're giving unto the Lord. And God is receiving it as a blessing, and it's credited to your account as righteousness. You know, this is not kind of where the message is going. You can shout amen right there. This is kind of not where the message is going, but this is really important. We should not be too concerned about how people receive or how people respond when we give because we're not really giving to them. We're giving unto the Lord. You, you remember when you bought that really ugly sweater for your cousin that they hated? Every time you saw them, you're like, well, why aren't you wearing this sweater? You, you know how much money I bought, and you know how much money I paid. You know I mean? you know, you know, when people aren't grateful for how you give or what you've given them, all of a sudden you be, I'm never giving them anything again, ungrateful. <laughs> Come on now. But we have the wrong mindset. Even if they're ungrateful, we weren't really giving to them. We were honoring God. We were blessing God. We were doing what God has called us to do, and that is what we are searching. That is what we are seeking for. The greatest experience is when you're able to give more than when you're able to receive. Can I say this? I love Destiny Harvest Church. Destiny Harvest Church is just off the chain. It's the center of my heart. I'm just bouncing off the wall about this church. But let me tell you this. You will get blessed by Destiny Harvest the most when you are a part of doing what God is doing here instead of just coming and receiving. Somebody say amen. It's great to come in here, and it's great to come and experience the presence of God. But you're really going to be blessed when you say, you know what? I want to be a part of creating an atmosphere for others to connect with God, for, for people to experience God the way that I've experienced God. Somebody on the dream team shout amen. 